Um, you mentioned being an intern. And then, so when you say last summer, so that was that the summer of 2020, 2020? 2020, yeah, that would have been okay. summer 2020. So you were an intern in the summer of 2020. Um, and just to spoil it a bit, you were part of the Dow MBA uh, team. And then you were an intern at Deloitte. And now you are still at Deloitte. So how about you... I want to hear a bit about you, Rika. I want to hear about <laughs> how did you come to Dell? Um, how did you get involved with the greenhouse? And then what made you stick around? Yeah, I feel like that's going to be a long-winded question, <laughs> but that's <laughs> fine. Um, so I did my undergrad at the University of Guelph in biomedical science with the original goal to go into medicine or some science domain at some point. But when I graduated, I realized I actually wasn't interested in being a doctor and that was not at all a lifestyle I wanted. Um, and the MBA had always kind of been on my radar when I had graduated, but the pivot from science to business just seemed so terrifying. Mm. So I took some time, I worked retail and retail management for a while. And then I kind of got to a point where I was tired of the GTA. I was living in Burlington at the time. And so my partner was just finishing his MBA at Brock and I was tired of what I was doing. So I quit my job and we decided to move to Halifax. It seemed like a natural far transition. <laughs> um, I hadn't actually applied yet. I didn't know what I was going to do, but we kind of took a leap of faith and decided to move across the country. Um, and so that was my moment. I was like, I guess the time is now if I'm going to do it. So I applied to the MBA and it all kind of worked out from there um, with Dalhousie. And it was an awesome experience as a student and, and continuing through the program and into my residency. And then the Deloitte Greenhouse just kind of was a stumble upon <laughs> experience. <laughs> um, as part of the, the CRMBA program, we have a number of employers come and speak to us. And we had had Deloitte con Consulting come and talk to us. But I had never heard of the Deloitte Greenhouse. And that job posting had come out a little bit after some of the initial, I know every year for the CRMBA program, um, the postings sometimes come out in different times, depending on employer timing. But for our years, we had a big drop of employer positions and a different roles but the Deloitte Greenhouse one came like a couple days after just kind of trickled out and I had no concept really of what it was but reading the job description I was like yeah there's you know there's a couple things in there that sound kind of cool I still don't really know what it is but let's do it um so I applied and I think I had asked in the interview or you had asked me what I knew about the greenhouse and I was like honestly I couldn't find much so I don't I, I'll try to answer that question um and then same question to Kara I had asked her like what what is the greenhouse what will I be doing and she had again, a bit of a leap of faith moment was like, I'm not, sh I'm not sure what this will be or what it will become. But if you're ready to try something different and be ready to I don't know, pivot or adapt as we go, then, then this could be for you. So it kind of worked out from there and we work well together and it was an awesome experience through my residency, COVID included. Um, and I was really excited to come back after graduating. Long-winded, so, sorry, no, like I said. This is, this is exactly <laughs> the perfect wind. Um, <laughs> did the full-time job exist? Oh, maybe I'll ask Kara this. Did the full-time job exist um, for Rika um, during the session or was that something that kind of evolved? So uh, Rika is wholeheartedly, I remember the conversation we had. She's like, so what does my day-to-day -day look like? And I'm like, I have no idea. This is the first time that we are, partnering with the Institute of Higher Education. It's the first time we're standing up a greenhouse, uh, partnering with someone else. So we'll see. Um, it's a bit of a bit of business development, a bit of, you know, starting a business. So there's the entrepreneurial piece. And then everything we thought it was going to be changed a month and a half into it because COVID hit. Um, so it it was a bit of a leap of faith to, to figure out what what we needed to do. Um, but we're there now and it seems to be working well. Uh, when we had originally set it up, it was just going to be me on site at the space from a, from a full-time perspective. Uh, we had Rika on board uh, and made the decision that we couldn't let her go. So as soon as we were able to, uh, a position opened up from a national perspective. So when we went, when COVID hit, we started to resource nationally. And so when a national greenhouse position opened up, I snagged it and said, I know someone who can do this. So 
we uh, created the position and made it local. So I love it, especially because that highlights what we often um, like profs, um, business professionals uh, tell our students is like you are always interviewing for your next job at your current one. You know, yep. if you if you put in all your effort, that's what's going to lead you to your next opportunity. Sometimes it's with the same employer, even if there's no spots available at the moment, you know, or sometimes it'll lead to them referring you to another really great space. Or sometimes it's somebody checking in like it, it all it all comes full circle. So it's really important to always, you know, do your best and also try to pick areas that excite you that you know um are intriguing that are something you want to try and people that you want to work with and trusting those gut gut feelings but also not being too calculated because you know <laughs> Rika if you had known exactly what you wanted to do um this opportunity may not have unfolded the way that it did and then um you know judging by our past conversations you are extremely excited and thrilled to be where you're at Yes, I feel very lucky to be where I am. And I will say I might have been a bit a bit needy as well after I, I had left the greenhouse and I kept in contact with Kara and and the greenhouse team and was constantly just doing a little hey, like I'm, st <laughs> I'm still here. I'm graduating at this time, maybe. I don't know. Keep yeah. in mind. <laughs> graduating in 65 days, 65 days, 65 days. Yeah. <laughs> it's, good. it's good to like stay and stay in touch, right? And to have those organic relationships and you know, judging by what I've observed of like your chemistry and our chemistry individually and collectively, it's, it's when it works, it's just fun, right? Work doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be a sentence. It should be fun. It should be doing cool things um, with fun people. So that's fabulous. Before we get too much further along, I would like to hear Kara's long-winded uh, version of how she came to be <laughs> at the greenhouse. How I got here. Uh, so my background is very uh, varied. I think my father refers to it as I went through my 20s and 30s checking off all the things I didn't want to do when I grew up. <laughs> uh, so had started off in engineering, then did classical studies and political science, did some community-based social work, uh, ended up getting my MBA and then worked in public policy for a bit, and then joined a boutique consulting firm in Oakville that focused on accelerating team-based decision-making. So facilitated discussions around strategy and alignment. Um, and that's where I spent the bulk of my career, ended up getting acquired by Deloitte. So Deloitte was a purchase uh, or purchased us, and then spent, I would say the last sort of 10 years before this role in consulting. So in human capital consulting um, and, and really trying different things in Deloitte. So I had the opportunity to, to do lots of different things within Deloitte that I probably wouldn't have done if I was anywhere else, just because there's so many opportunities and different things you can do. And then this opportunity just arose I sort of heard through the grapevine that they were opening a greenhouse and I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. Um, and reached out to the, the partner who was leading it up, reached out to our managing director and said, I really want to do this. And they're like, all right, go talk to the right people. And if anybody, if everybody's aligned, then off you go. So it, it, uh, it was a bit of a serendipity for everything coming together. But uh, my background is very varied from a little bit of everything. Uh, a bit of, nope, don't want to do that. Try this. Nope, don't want to do that. <laughs> and so there's a lot of exploration and experience to get me to where I am here, um, which I think speaks to that career path piece, right? Like I would have never thought I would have ended up here. And the career path I took was more around experiences and exploration versus I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. Just playing devil's advocate a little bit, sometimes students think, oh, shoot, if I do X, but it doesn't lead to Y, then X is wasted. What are your thoughts? Do you feel like you wasted time doing your engineering and classical studies? No, especially, and again, consulting is a bit of a different beast because you can bring all those things to bear. And certainly uh, in the role in the greenhouse, the, the little bit of social work and understanding how groups work uh, both community and business groups. The little bit of engineering, when you're in a, a group with folks who have an engineering background from a business perspective, you've got insight into the language they speak and how they do it. Um, classical studies, there's always something that you can bring to bear from a classics perspective, <laughs> even if it's just for trivia night. Um, there's always <laughs> some sort of, so I would say all those experiences 
and knowledge come together in interesting and different ways. Uh, and you can you can bring them to bear in whatever you're doing. You just have to figure out how to do it. Um, and I think that's part of the fun of yeah. the discovery is how do I how do I get to incorporate and bring all the cool things that I know and have experienced to the people that I'm working with and the people that I'm working for. Yeah, I would very much agree. So in speaking of that, it's like when you're somewhere, you can look backwards and say, hey, what are my very experiences and the skills that I can kind of smush together and present here and like, and they excite me. And then on a forward looking basis, knowing that whatever your next step or steps or, you know, paths are, that it's all okay. Like it's, it's all okay. Are you being, you know, a good human? Are you treating others with kindness and respect? Are you honoring yourself? Um, you know, are you trying hard? Do you have a good attitude? Like control the controllables and have, have some fun. So hopefully that gives some permission out there.